Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, let's get started. So today we have, uh, hopefully you can help me join in welcoming, uh, Piotr and Mateusz, actually inverted. So Piotr's over there, Mateusz is over here, from the U University of Warsaw uh, ICM. ICM. OK, great. Now. Oh. No, no. oh, now it's better. Okay, perfectly. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Piotr Dendek. Uh, together with Mateusz Fedoryszak, uh, we are going to present the implementation of random ferns for Apache Spark done in Interdisciplinary Center for Mathematical and Computational Modeling, which is part of University of Warsaw. So I'm going to tell you how we get here in terms of random ferns implementation. First, what or who has inspired us and what are random ferns? Next, Mateusz is going to describe the implementation part. Finally, we are going to share with you evaluation results and describe how to publish your package on sparkpackages.org. So, let's start. Uh, some of you, especially people interested in the image processing field, might have heard about random ferns as one of the state-of-the-art al state algorithms. One of our colleagues at ICM, Niron Kursa, used random ferns in his research. As the great fan of our language, he implemented this algorithm and published it in the CRAN repository. It was quite a long time before Spark version 1.0. Seeing how successful random fans can be and being great fans of Apache Spark, we decided to empower Spark community with this classification algorithm. The best way to do so was to publish it via sparkpackages.org. Well. Hmm. Now, let me say a few words about algorithm itself. Random Ferns is the method which uses supervised learning to classify or label new examples using knowledge about the training set the plural form in the algorithm name indicates that during model creation, many single classifiers will be created and when classification occurs, results from each of them will be combined. So in the ideal world, we could use probabilistic approach with ease. We would know the ways in which feature depends on each other and how the classes depends on them, that is, joint probability. In the real world, however, we do not have so much information. We can observe, or we cannot observe all combination of feature values. Yet, you would like to use probabilistic approach and, in fact, we are doing so in random forests, random ferns, you give a name. And that is thanks to easing constraints on classification, especially by using naive bias, where we assume that all features are independent. This assumption is false, yet it has proven to be second best thing to the pure true. Okay. Thanks to this nice property of probabilistic independence, we would only have to check how probable is obtaining a class having a given feature value. Then we multiply probabilities of having a given class from each feature and eventually yield the most probable class. So 
it is much easier in terms of RAM and computations to track probabilities and to return the final result. Let me follow this uh, ML101 class for just a few more slides. So tracking joint probabilities of everything is the first no-no. The second is called overfitting because we want to avoid overfitting and we would like to create model in parallel. The good idea to use is sampling items with replacement alongside with feature sampling. This process can be executed for as many mini clusters called ferns as we want with as many features as we want and the memory allow us to. So in the presented example, we have three subset out of one. Each of them has sample of original data. Also, each of them has the same number of features, but features may be different across subsets. Now, using each subset, we can create a mini classifier called ferns. OK, we have L ferns each of which uses S features out of N. So we have less features and less items. Each fern classifies an item in its own way. For each item, we have probabilities of an item I being classified to each of classes. Now, it may look fancy, but if we change the big bold F, with small bold f, fix the number of ferns with the number of features, we get our classical naive bias classifier. Yeah, looks familiar. So let's, of course, create it with bold uh, big f, number s, etc., going back to random forest, uh, random ferns. Now, Thanks to training and classifiers, each of which depends on some subset of features, we obtain less naive classification. We implicitly assume some relations between data are represented as ferns. Now, what is going under the hood of each fern? Let's look on the tree representation of ferns. First of all, yes, all ferns are perfectly binary trees. This is thanks to feature binarizations. Features are somehow binarized against some threshold, returning one or zero. Each level of a fern contains a test against the same feature. The test return value one or zero. So going from the root to a leaf, we can collect bits, which can be cast to an integer number, call it feature key. When we are at a leaf, we see probabilities of each class. So a fern is a two-dimensional array when the x-axis is the feature key and the y-axis is a class index. Now in the cell with indices of x and y, we have a probability. Now it, may, it might be big, but we can train it and use it fast. So what is interesting now is how it can be constructed at scale. Uh, Mateusz, can you bring us the details? Of course I can, thank you. Mm, so frankly, I won't be talking much about code, more about the concepts that allowed us to sort of transform algorithm working well in the sequential environment to, to distributed environment. So first concept I would like to talk about is bagging. Um, as Piotrek said, random ferns are about training many little classifiers called ferns, and each of these classifiers uses a small subset of original features. But to train all of that classifiers, we need a training set for each of them. How do we generate that? We, that's where bagging comes in. Uh, I have presented mm, 
prepared some, some simulation of that process. Actually, we sample with replacement from the original training set. So we've got new training set for one fern. As you can see, there are some objects may be sampled more than once. Some of them can not occur in the new training set at all. But actually, that's what we want. We want slightly modified, randomized training set for each fern. But uh, the problem is sampling from big data set made, might be difficult. So we need to slightly change our perspective. Do note that we don't care that much about the sequence of elements in training set. What we can do then is instead of representing every object in training set, we can represent the number of occurrences of each object from the initial set in the new training set. We can have array like, like this. And because of that, instead of sampling individual objects, we can sample number of occurrences. Fortunately for us, there is a mathematical distribution called binomial distribution, which allows us to model that. What's more, at what might be surprising, the fact we are working with big data makes things easy, because as the number of elements we are sampling from grows to infinity, the binomial distribution tends to Poisson distribution, which has even some um, even simpler uh, probability density function. So instead of sampling individual objects, we will sample the number of occurrences. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk about is binarization. Uh, as Piotrek said, again, uh, random ferns work with binary feature, whereas in the real world scenarios, we usually use categorical features like A color or gender or continuous features like um, average income or something. How do we transform that into binary features? Actually, we are using very simple methods. We, for categorical features, we are just sampling a random subset of uh, possible feature values and say, oh, those which fall in that subset are true, the others are false. Uh, for continuous features, we randomly sample uh, two feature values, uh, take their mean at threshold, and again, those which are above threshold are true, the others are false. Uh, that seems too naive to work, but actually does. Why is it so? Uh, the original author of algorithm states the algorithm is crafted out of pure magic, but let us look for some how more rational explanation. The key is every fern uh, uses, or the other way around, we assume that a particular feature may be used by many ferns, and each of these ferns will have each, uh, its own binarizer. So we will have several threshold, thresholds for continuous features and several that random subsets for categorical features. And because of that, we'll be able to sort of model that features properly. A few words about implementation of that. Uh, for categorical features, it's easy because we assume that user provides us information about categorical features. In fact, whole mllib library does that. Uh, for continuous features, it's slightly more complex. We ca you can think about that as being similar to randomly shuffling a list by assigning every element a random number and then sorting by those numbers and taking the first two elements of the list. And because of that, we take care only about first two elements. The process simplifies greatly. Mm. The last thing uh, I would like to talk in this part requires me to bear with some more equations and probabilities, but it's worth it. 
so bear with me. Uh, that's the equation that actually Piotr has demonstrated before. It basically says that for a given object, its classification will be the class which yields the greatest probabilities. The first of these probabilities is just the probability of a class, so it's easy to compute. But the second one is much more interesting, so let's focus on it. Mm. That FL element is a combination of binary feature values used by a given fern. As we have said, we use only binary features. So uh, if fern takes into account S features, there will be two to the power of S distinct feature values. And you may think about that as uh, putting a particular object to a bucket. Or uh, you may use that analogy that Piotr was talking about, the tree analogies. Which leaf of a tree we end in. So, because of that, actually, that's the probability of a given object of a particular, sorry, it's a probability of an object of a particular class being put or mapped by our binarizers into a particular bucket. So, if we recall classical definition of probability, it's just count of objects of a given class in a given uh, bucket divided by the count of all the objects in that class. And that word count should ring a bell. Yes, you're right. We have just transformed the problem of classifier training to the word count, the problem which was studied since the emergence of Hadoop era. So, mm, the whole training process is quite easy because of that, and it can be implemented in distributed uh, environment fairly quite efficient. The only warning I need to give is about memory usage. As there are many probabilities we need to store, actually the memory we require grows exponentially with number of, fer of features we take into account in one fern. But it's a kind of uh, trade-off. I mean, as you want to model more complex relationships between, between features, you require more memory. What's more, memory gets cheaper, as we know from previous talks today. So, so that's good. But it would be a shame to talk about a uh, new algorithm during big data conference without providing any data about its performance. So, Piotr, can you give us some numbers? Yes, of course. So, random firms can be quite memory consuming, but AWS has those two terabytes uh, memory machines. Because of the requirement in memory, the first evaluation on, of our package was done on cars and iris uh, data sets. Yeah, the accuracy values obtained on those data sets were on expected level, meaning that the algorithm is implemented correctly, and uh, we are so satisfied that we uh, put those data sets in our integration tests. Anyways, at that point, we could claim, uh, we could calmly move to bigger data sets to check how fast we can train model depending on a number of features and a number of training samples. Now, we use million song data set to predict year of publishing each song. Um, we used uh, 90, uh, the, there were 90 numerical features and the publication year uh, ranging from uh, 1922 to 2011. Uh, this prediction would be better than with regression algorithms. Okay, we knew it. The bottom line is to use large volume of data. So, API 
of random fairness is similar to algorithm uh, to algorithms presented in uh, MLlib. You have to read data, pass them into labeled points, then you pass it to the train method of fern forest uh, alongside with number of ferns, uh, number of uh, features, etc. So uh, after that, you obtain model and you can use the method predict uh, against some uh, feature vector to get the label. Now, uh, when we do so many times, we get some uh, pretty uh, fancy um, empirical, uh, say, equation, estimation of time needed to train a model. Having a number of uh, features fixed, training time depends linearly on a number of items. So conversely, having a number of training items fixed, training time depends linearly on a number of features. And it's, it's pretty amazing uh, when we compare it to random forests. Now, let's look on this, but using some charts. So, with the data set of half a million items and 10 ferns and using 10 features out of 90, model training take about 27 minutes. Now, increasing the number of features to 20 results in about two times longer model creation. Now, let's fix the number of ferns and features to 10 and change number of items used in model training. Training time is three minutes with 10% of the data set and about 12 minutes with 50% of items. To sum up this part, assuming we have enough memory, uh, a model will be created in reasonable and predictable time. Knowing this, let's move to package publishing. Mateusz? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, the, as the last part of our, our presentation, I would like to tell something about, about deployment and packaging and dissemination of our work. Uh, so, in this slide, I present some of uh, fantastic tools that we have used in our process, but in this presentation, I would like to focus on two of them. Oh. There is not everything on the slide. We used Travis as well and uh, Spark packages. And Spark packages and the central repository will be of our interest during, during next few minutes. So why did we choose those? Because these are tools that make life of your users easier, that help your users discover your work and then use it. So Spark Packages is a community index of, of packages for Apache Spark. It's very easy to register your own project. You can register any GitHub hosted project. You just need to log in with your GitHub credentials and select the particular project and that's it. You can add some information about licensing and releases, and generally, that will make uh, discovery of your project significantly easier. The other thing is the central repository. That's the repository that Maven, as well as other built tools, use as a default place to look for artifacts. If uh, user wants any artifact as dependency of its project, then Maven looks for that artifact in this repository by default. Uh, the thing important for us is Spark does the same. If a user uh, wants Spark shell to load a particular artifact, uh, Spark will go to that repository to get this artifact. So, if your project is open source and your artifacts aren't there yet, they should be. 
And actually, getting that is fairly easy. Fortunately, Sonotype provides free repository where you can deploy snapshots of your open source projects, as well as you can stage releases of your uh, releases artifacts, uh, which then can be promoted to, to the central repository. I've provided a checklist of what, what needs to be actually done. There is also a guide on, on their page explaining everything in detail. So that's easy process, although it takes some time to do that. So you may be wondering if it's worth it. Is, should I invest this additional time in that? Well, that's the example. What can you do with that? I mean, once your package is in the central repository, your user only needs to specify that he wants it, and then Spark will pull the, the package as well as all of its dependencies from the repository. So there is only one step needed to start working with, with Sparkling Ferns. It's not fake. You can check it, even now. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, we have presented to you the original algorithm, the process. It went from sequential to distributed. We have given some pieces on advice or on packaging. And now we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yes, we have time for that, I guess. Yeah, I think we have time for one or two questions. So um, we can open the floor. One question back there. Uh, thank you for your very well done presentation. I really liked it. And I have a question. When you have a data set with uh, uh, a lot of different uh, categorical variables, can your algorithm somehow help to determine the most influential one and so to, uh, to find a, can help to find an efficient method to compress Less, uh, less important ones into more efficient buckets of uh, categories? Mm. You mean if there is a method of mm, choosing only those, the, the most important features, is that right? Yes. Uh, that's definitely in our plans. With random forests algorithm, you get that um, assessment of features telling which ones are important. We can definitely do this with random ferns. Actually, that's the main part of uh, research conducted by Miron, which we have mentioned in the beginning. Uh, the Spark package is not able to do that yet, but our package, which Miron is author of, definitely is able to do that. So yeah, that's that's some sort of future work for us. Just by the way, if you want to uh, decide which feature is important, you can use uh, SVM and get uh, weights uh, for each feature and pick uh, features with the uh, biggest uh, weights. So that's, that's the other way around. Okay. Another question? I think that might be all the time we have for questions. So uh, please uh, join me in thanking our speakers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.